Yes, hi. Allow me to introduce to you the Astella turntable, talk about its concept, the background, why it was made the way it is, and about its merits, and last not least, all the hidden features that you just can't see by just looking at it, but which contributes a lot to its sonic impact. So the Astella, of course, had a forefather, the Apolite, an extremely large turntable, which for us, for me myself, always was something like a kind of breed board. So I could just go into extremes and try whatever I thought would make the analog front end turntable wise as good as ever possible. The Astella, after working 30 years with numerous versions of the Apolite, is actually the essence of all this experience. Means what the Astella is, it is, and I very much like it also looking at it that way, it is the essence, it is the performance and the features of the Apolite reduced to the max and going a few steps further, even if much more moderate in size and not as big and honestly too gigantic. So the Astella is, as you see, composed of three layers. The upper two layers are resting on air springs. These air springs are getting the air from the power supply, having built-in sensors which allow self-leveling. So you switch it on and the upper two layers, including the bearing and the platter, just move upwards and are, by doing so, with a resonance frequency of below 1 Hz, isolated from the lower layer, which housed the motor, the counter wheel and all electronics. And of course, the control panel. So you touch here, it has no impact. You can do it during play. It's perfect isolated from that. Between the upper two layers means the tone arm layer and the middle layer. The middle layer carries a bearing, which is a completely maintains free magnetic bearing and a push-pull magnetic bearing. So it's not just repelling magnets, but in the axis, which has a diameter of about 1.3 inches, so 30 millimeters, uh, at the bottom is another pair of magnets, which are drawing to each other. So we are creating a push-pull magnetic bearing, which allows to actually not just levitating the platter, which is about 23 kilograms, but also loading that bearing, making a preloaded magnetic bearing that where we actually can adjust its inner damping and of course its kind of stiffness. That bearing runs in, in a Lume encapsuling which allows also all static energy that builds up during a tracking process of vinyl is dispersed through the bearing because inside the Lume bearing are small deposits of carbon, which is, as we all know, electricity conductive. So any static energy goes here away through the bearing. There's no upload. You will never hear the pop that you usually have if you do not work with an anti-static device from time to time. The upper layer carries four identical arm boards and one special one on the back which is of course only intention for actually maybe housing there or tangential tracking tone arm which simply then can be really located where it originally was intended at the end of the the four arm boards are all four identical in shape and cross symmetrical with their mirror axis over the spindle. So an arm mounted and aligned with a cartridge on one arm board can be transferred without any need to realign to any of the other three positions. Inside, underneath the arm boards, are pass boards. So this is securing 
absolute precise setting whenever you take the armboard away and put it somewhere else it's absolutely matching so a spot here is on an absolute circle around the spindle it's the same on every armboard the platter is actually not just optical but also in terms of sonics the absolute heart of the turntable the upper area here underneath the record is vinyl so it's the absolute same material that are that records are made of why because it has the same energy transfer properties it has the same inner resonance frequencies so what you do not want you do not want a reflective surface every other material except vinyl is reflective towards vinyl so here we have the material identical in the coupling after that you see here roughly two centimeters thickness of the vinyl actually the vinyl is five centimeters thick the other three centimeters are hidden inside uh, the outer uh, aluminium lower part of the platter and there in a very complex um, pattern the vinyl runs into 38 layers of organic material which actually creating a dead quiet platter this is the ideal theoretically physical ideal of a platter you take the energy in and then it is completely absorbed but without any possibility to reflect back to the surface in a different amplitude which happens on many, many turntable platters. So this was a concept that was in a less sophisticated form, always the one key feature of the former three versions of the Apolite, uh, the inner construction of the platter. This is the heart. This is where I would say 90% of the sonics of what the Astella can provide in terms of blackness of background, of quietness, of microdynamics, of air, of very tiny ambience details, which otherwise get simply absorbed and not bring, bring, bring forth during the tracking process because they are clouded or eliminated or just simply dying in a swamp of unwanted resonances. So the quietness the blackness in the background that the Astella provides is actually the result of a physical thing. Means something that allows the parameters to be as good as possible without being clouded, without being disturbed by anything. The feet of the uh, Astella are easily to be aligned with the we have a special tool for that and underneath they have an insert made out of PTFE, Teflon, which moves very smoothly, which never makes, leaves any mark on any surface. And coming to the drive, the Astella is not what we would call a belt drive. Yes, it is using a belt. But that belt is used in a way of like in a transmission machine. Means we have not a circumference of the platter and then the motor on the other way, but we have a motor and we have completely symmetrical on the other side, a counter wheel. So we have only uh, about 12 to 14% of the platter is actually touched by the belt and it's not that the bearing is dragged in any way. It is kind of a force-free resting bearing. Also the level, the bearing level of the uh, Astella is exactly in the center of the, graffiti, of the gravity. It means it is act actually in the center of the mass itself. So the the platter itself has a weight of about 22.4 kilograms, roughly adding up to about 50 pounds. Uh, yes, it is funny enough and it tells a hell of a lot of the inner concept. The platter is lighter than the platter of the Apolite, but it provides an even 
more black background and quietness in the performance. This from by me now often <laughs> uh, talked about quietness in performance is one of the, I would say, absolute essence and the one thing where a turntable really can stand out. This is what it shall provide. Quietness of backgrounds to allow all the details to really come forth, to create the ambience, to create the small nuances in color shadings, in expression in voices, in actually also allowing a huge headroom with crescendos, with high-pitched voices, which on many turntables creating problems time and again, not just by mistracking, but also we have actually a turntable and a platter can clip. Especially lower weight platters, you actually hear it often, but you contribute that experience or that actually clipping to other parameters. But often it is actually really the platter. Bearing is actually completely maintenance free. Um, the turntable is self leveling means it is resting on four air springs which are uh, equipped with individual sensors and it is actually yes it's not just the apolite reduced to the max it's the apolite 2.0 in 0.2 size it's much, much smaller, much easier to handle. And even in our demo room at Acoustical Systems, the Astella has replaced the Apolite. And as it looks now, and I've now lived with it quite some time and have 30 years experience with evolution in the Apolite, this is my final attempt on the turntable, at least in terms of how good can it get because it leaves for me and for what I've heard from the few owners we have delivered it to, nothing to be desired. Thank you.